All right, we're in the kitchen now with executive chef Joseph Walker and sous chef Nelson Cardona from Tynes Restaurant. You guys are one of the 80 restaurants participating in Restaurant Week in Virginia Beach this year. Yes, ma'am. You guys got a lot of stuff going on this morning. Yes, I mean, usually we get like maybe one or two good dishes, but you've brought like a whole meal. Yes. What are you going to make for us? Well, we're going to start off with a little appetizer for you today. It's going to be a um, scallop caprese. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of our biggest dishes that we sell at the restaurant currently. Salad Caprice. Now, I know that uh, Craig, our cameraman here, is going, Capri, 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 what? what is Caprice? Well, it's, uh, it's just like the tomato Caprice. Right. Uh, it's an Italian dish. We decide to substitute the scallops for the tomatoes, which is a very good dish. We're going to top that off with a little balsamic glaze, get a little sweetness to it. Um, I think you'll really like that dish. All right. And what else? We go, then we're going to follow for the brick chicken. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a uh, beer chicken that people do in the grill. Mm. Um, so we, we put the brick on top of it to get all the juices out of it. We're going to do that with a pan gravy, some roasted corn risotto, and some nice broccoli for you. And then we're going to finish up the segment with a homemade, old-fashioned strawberry shortcake. Mm, sounds delicious. Can't wait. All right, we're going to get back to these guys in just a couple of minutes, Chris. Seems like all we do around this show is eat, huh? All right, I'm back in the kitchen now with uh, Chef Joe and Sue Chef Nelson here. We got a lot of stuff to get going, gentlemen. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to start with the scallops? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to start sauteing the scallops. Um, Nelson's got a little oil blend. We use a oil blend, which is 10% olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to start sauteing the scallops in that oil blend till they get a nice crust on them. The crust helps the scallops stay nice and moist. Now, Chef Joe, I got to ask because I know scallops don't usually look that color. So, what do you have on them now? We have a garlic peppercorn char crust. Okay. Um, you can use any kind of char crust you like. That's what we chose to use at the at the hotel, and it goes very well. So, once they're nice and crusted, it's going to give it a very nice garlic peppercorn flavor to it. All right, and Nelson, you are doing what? What's going in here now? The chicken. This is the brick chicken. Um, sauteing the skin side first, so it gives that nice little uh, crustiness to it. And then you're going to. Place this. We usually use a brick for for, uh, for the show. We use a pan. Okay. And, uh, so if you got a brick at home. <laughs> yeah, we, we use a brick and just wrap it in foil and wrap place it around the top, and it sears out the natural juices. That way, you could come back with the whisk and pick it all up and make the gravy with the natural juices. Okay, and that's interesting because most of the time people are, you know, you're trying to keep all those juices in. But what's the difference when you take them out and you're making it this way? What, what kind of? It makes juice the you gravy mean? more flavorful. The gravy flavorful. Yes, And everybody loves because you use the flavorful gravy. You use juices from the chicken to make the gravy. All right. And you've got tons of ingredients yes, over here, including this. Um, is this, this actually? Was the white wine is this I... for drinking or for helping you get through the show? That's for helping me get through the show. Okay, <laughs> just, I had to ask. All right. And we've got uh, garlic and but pepper, white pepper only, you said. Yes, sir. we use white pepper just for the taste, so that way you can't see it, but it has a strong taste to it. That's what we use the white pepper for. Okay. Now, how long do we need to let these um, simmer well, these, and, and fry up? These scallops here, you only go let them simmer for a few minutes. You don't want to dry them out. Mm -hmm. um, he's about ready to um, start flipping them now. You can see where they're splitting there. So he's about ready to start flipping. The key to this is flipping them very gently so you do not break off the char crust. Right, and the scallops are so fragile. Yes, ma'am. They're very fragile. We do use a large scallop so they do stay together um, very well for us. But the key is him flipping this and making sure he keeps all the char crust on the scallop. Now we're watching you carefully. Very careful. Oh, don't burn yourself. <laughs> he's done this a few times. All right. Nice job. All right. Flip those over, and we just do about two or three minutes on each side. Yes, ma'am. That's all it takes. Huh? A couple minutes on each side. And what about our chicken? The chicken, you're going to let that cook for about eight minutes on that side. Mm -hmm. You're going to flip it over, remove the pan, let it cook for about another four or five minutes, and then we'll finish that in the oven. And then as that's finished in the oven, we'll go ahead and make that um, pan gravy right in that pan. Okay. Now, is this something that you guys make all the time at the restaurant, or is this just something special for restaurant week? This is on our menu. It's been on our menu. We do our menus uh, twice a year. Mm -hmm. We do a fall and a spring menu. Get out of his way. Um, and we change it up. So this has been on our menu. What we do when we change it up, we just try to see what our guests like. Mm -hmm. And if they like something, we leave it on there. That's and if they don't like it, we take it off, and we may bring it back at another season. Uh, we, so far, we've been very successful with that. Yeah, well, how can you go wrong with giving the people what they like? Hey, that's it. Absolutely. Okay, and you've just um, thrown some garlic in here with a little oil and... And a little bit of wine and uh, the mixed roasted red and yellow peppers. Mm -hmm. And this is going to go for? This is going to be, it's going to be topped on top of the fresh mozzarella that I'm going to scorch here in a second. Ooh, yeah, you got my attention. Fresh mozzarella. Yes, ma'am. We're going All to right. have fresh mozzarella slices that I'm going to take a torch to it and scorch the top of it. And I'm going to place this uh, sautéed peppers and sautéed uh, spinach on top of it on mm -hmm. each... Uh, Mozzarella piece, and then it's going to be topped with that, and then the glaze goes across. Now, this seems a little complicated just talking about it, but when I watch you do it, it seems easy. Is this something most people could do in their own kitchen? Oh, yes. I've done this plenty of times when I went to go see my uncle. I, I did it for him at his house. We went and bought a torch. But see, so you're it. a professional. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> do I have to have a torch to do that? No. 
But when we say torch, we're actually using a butane, butane torch. Mm -hmm. We're not using right. a regular torch, so it's a little butane torch. Right. And you can buy the top for that at, in most of your hardware stores. We have ours from Restaurant Depot. Okay. So it's not a regular torch like you used to use at home. All right, sounds good. And now we are adding the fresh spinach. spinach. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to saute that up, let that, let that wilt down a little bit. Now, what's the key with with wilting spinach? Because you don't want to, if you if you get the pan too hot, I know it's going to stick. It's, yes, right. You just want to keep it low at a low heat and just want to basically just let the, you guys should probably cut it off too to let it wilt, but you don't need to let it cook for that long because spinach cooks so fast. Right. right. And sometimes people, people can uh, feel that little grittiness with spinach. Any tips on, professional tips on that? Um, cook it. No, just cook it till it's. Till I'm it's standing well. back a little now. We got the grease going for the chicken. <laughs> Nice All right, looks good. All right, and what's next? We gotta get the uh, the fresh mozzarella. Cheese. Uh oh. Oh. Did we lose our cheese? There we go. Good fresh mozzarella. Now, what's the difference between buying the good fresh mozzarella and just getting, you know, what you can get in the? Well, the flavor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a flavor. We wanted to buy a, a very nice uh, fresh mozzarella. There's no use buying it if you're not gonna buy it very nice. I mean, the fresh way to do it is do your own, Whoa, but not everybody. I hear can do a torch. That. <laughs> Here, let's get Craig over there to get a shot yes, of that. He's okay, so he's got, side. he's torching the cheese. Almost looks like we're roasting marshmallows over there. Yep, and all he's doing is browning it off, and it really, truly changed the flavor of the cheese. By just crusting it a little bit, not till it melts, just put a little crust on there, you'll really see the difference in the flavor of it. How does it change? I know if you're going to cook like a tomato, it gets a lot sweeter, but what happens to a cheese? It makes it more smokier. So it's almost like a smoke flavor, like you charred it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you had it on the grill or something like that. All right. Well, I can't wait to put this all together. We are going to get back to you guys in the next segment, try to put all this together, and then get to dessert. Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Chef Joe. Mm, we are back in the kitchen with Executive Chef Joseph Walker and sous chef Nelson Cardona from Tynes Restaurant, one of the 80 participating in Virginia Beach Restaurant Week. All right. We are topping off this delicious meal. This smells so good. The gravy is so yummy. Okay, what we do? We've got our uh, cheese that we we got our cheese that, flambe we, that we flambeed a little bit. We browned it off a little bit. Nelson is top, topping it with our vegetable mix, which is spinach, and your red and your uh, yellow roasted peppers. Mm -hmm. A little garlic in there. Yep, a little garlic and a little white wine. Then we go put a scallop right on top of each one of Ooh, them. Ooh, that's so pretty. The idea is to place it right on top as best you can. Okay. Now that is a party dish right there. It's kind of confetti-like and Yes, yeah, so you gorgeous. can use it. I mean, it's something you can use for herbs at a party mm -hmm. or as a meal of itself. That looks And we just put gorgeous. them on top like so. And then Nelson's going to put a little balsamic glaze on top of it, which is going to sweeten it up a little bit. While we get out, um, what is our second dish is the chicken. Second dish is going to be the brick chicken. The brick chicken, which brick we chicken. made in the skillet. We did in the skillet. Put First. it in the oven. And how long did you keep it in the oven uh, after put, you... Uh, we kept it in the oven for about 10 minutes. Okay. Right a little longer because of the show. Okay. okay. Got that nice caramel look to it. And then Beautiful. basically we just take this with that little bone sticking up in the air. You always know how to make it look so pretty. Well, that's most, a lot of food is making it look good. Yeah, people you eat, eat with, with your, your eyes. eyes. That's so, right. And I rest on the thing, when things go out looking good, people want to order it. That's right. Okay. People so say, oh, what's he got at that uh, table over there? Little pan gravy, natural juice gravy. Just right over top of it a little bit there. Beautiful. And then what we've done here, I've made a... Um, Cut out a tomato. Mm -hmm. And you're going to turn that into a pretty, rose, pretty aren't you? Pretty simple. Just take mm -hmm. the skin and cut it off a tomato. We're going to roll this into a rose as a little garnish. Beautiful. All right. We got to make sure we save time and room for dessert. All right. All right. That dessert. is a pretty rose. Okay. Moving over to the dessert. And we are making a. Uh, We're making an old fashioned. Nelson, can you move that? Yes, sir. We're making an old fashioned strawberry, strawberry shortcake. shortcake. A little different. We've got a cinnamon biscuit here, homemade. I was just going to ask you what made it the um, the more brown yep. color. So cinnamon biscuit. It's a cinnamon biscuit. Okay. I've got a little raspberry mousse. Mm. We pipe a little raspberry mousse in the middle mousse. of it. Is it not like a whipped cream? It's a mousse. No, huh? this is actually a mousse. Then All we right. go put our tops back on. Beautiful. Okay. And of course, it's always better when you make the biscuits from scratch. Yes, always better. We got, and then the strawberry mixture here, we have Grand Marnier, okay. orange Ooh. juice, cranberry juice, and sugar. Ooh. This has been marinated nice. overnight. Kind of equal nice parts flavor. of each? Or equal, how do you... equal parts of each. Okay. okay. And obviously this time of the year, a little more sugar because the strawberries are not as sweet. Right. If it's in the Wait summertime. June, July for those yes. are sweet strawberries. And we're just going to put this right over top of it here. That looks beautiful. Get some of that juice on there to get the biscuits that good flavor. And here comes my man with the whipped cream. I knew there had to be whipped cream. Yep. <laughs> then we put a nice little dollop of whipped cream up on top of here. And 
Oh, top never, that off. Oh, with, he's got to make it look pretty again. Top that off with some mint leaves. With some mint leaves. That is gorgeous. Now, when you guys have you participated in a restaurant week in the past? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, how does it get really crazy? It does from time to time. The thing about getting busy for restaurant week is letting people know that you're you doing restaurant week. And right. That's why we're on the show today to Let get people the exposure. Know. And do you prefer that people make reservations? Or we prefer that they just come. They just come. They just come. They can make reservations. We do not require reservations. So if you want a good meal, please try Times Restaurant. Okay. And again, you are located where? Uh, 4453 Bonnie Road, right mm -hmm. outside of town center. If you take a left off of Independence in between the McDonald's and the Wendy's, we're right there. All right. Thank you so much. Thank I just you. can't wait to taste this. It looks yummy. Again, uh, January 12th through the 19th is Virginia Beach Restaurant Week. More than 80 restaurants are participating. Visit dineandvb.com or call 422-4420 for a list of restaurants, menus, and all the information you need to take advantage of Virginia Beach Restaurant Week. It's one of those weeks where you want to make sure you got the elastic pants ready to go. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank for having you. us, Debbie.